right guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the BMW M Performance Brake Kit available for the F30 chassis 3 Series. Uh, my car is a 2015 328 rear wheel drive. It does not have the M Sport package, so I don't have the blue caliper brakes. I have the standard single piston Bosch sliding calipers front and rear. I believe the fronts are 312 millimeter diameter by uh, 24 millimeter thickness. Sounds about right. I think the rear is around 300 millimeter diameter. I don't know the thickness, but the point is um, the car the car itself has really good braking right from the factory. In fact, I would argue that the initial bite on a cold set of brakes on the car is a little bit extreme, actually. Um, driving other cars, I get into my car and uh, my, three, my 328, and that first uh, application of the brake pedal, the stop sign down the street, usually catches me off guard. It bites so hard. But after driving the car, you know, around town spiritedly you know back roads that kind of thing you can tell the braking is totally adequate but you can see where it starts to get a little greasy but the uh the initial bite that the brakes have uh is kind of misleading because it, it doesn't it doesn't perform like that throughout the temperature cycle of the brakes so i'm planning on a couple upgrades uh, including a wheel and tire upgrade and uh, as a result you're going to see the calipers and brake rotors quite well through the through the spokes of the wheel and i just figured you know, I have intentions of perhaps doing HPDEs this summer, uh, late spring, combined with a uh, really set of sticky tires and nice set of wheels, I might as well complete the package and throw some brakes on behind them. I contemplated picking up the M Sport kit, um, you know, secondhand or, or otherwise, which have the blue calipers and the uh, solid blank rotors, front and rear. Uh, not pictured are the rear rotors here, I just couldn't fit everything on the table. But so I, I went down that path of thinking, and quite frankly, um, by the time you get done with it, usually buying the calipers secondhand and refinishing them, you're not that far off from buying the M Performance kit anyway. You can find killer deals on the blue calipers, but I saw the blue calipers usually around, oh, I don't know, like five or $600 for the fronts and about the same for the rear um, in a condition that, quite frankly, I would want to strip and repowder coat or repaint. So I'm calling them like six to seven, eight hundred dollars for the fronts, and about the same for the rears once I'm in. So that's sixteen hundred ish dollars for the caliper set, and then you got to factor in buying new rotors and pads. So you're you're really getting up there. Um, you can find varying pricing on this performance kit, but the truth is, um, you know, it's close to twenty four hundred dollars or something like that retail. Um, they don't include the rear rotors with the base kit because they want you to buy the rotors that would match your car. So for instance, all of the performance package brakes or all the M performance brakes will fit 335s, 340s, 328s, 320s, but the rear rotor setup depends on whether or not you've got a 320, 328 or 335, 340. So they sell that rotor set uh, separately. One of the reasons I went with the M Performance kit over trying to piece together an M Sport kit is that you really do get everything you need right in the box. Um, I have some pictures of the packaging and the way the kit arrived, but basically it's bailed up. It's all individually boxed. So this caliper comes wrapped in wax paper. This caliper, caliper comes wrapped in wax paper. The, the pads come in their own, you know, BMW original packaging. Um, these, these aluminum front shields are wrapped real nice. It comes with the rear uh, dust shields as well. Um, the one important part to me it comes with all new hardware pre-coated with uh, Loctite. It tells you all the, 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 the specs and stuff that you need to torque to. And it's really just one big complete package. It also comes with the brake pad wear sensors. I mean, you really don't have to go and do anything. The only thing you need to do is buy brake fluid and know how to put brakes on a car. There is one caveat of having to code the car. There's a lot of debate on the internet as to what the coding actually does. Um, I'm under the opinion that I, I don't know if there's some sort of proportioning valve that's com controlled by the ABS unit. That, that sounds a little bit extreme because that, I don't know why that would be adjustable per se, but I do think that the ABS and the DSC is recalibrated to allow for different wheel slip situations. So if the car were braking super hard on the factory brakes, the car would probably assume that it's ready to lock up or close to lock up. Whereas these brakes, um, uh, have more have a different braking threshold so perhaps the abs or dsc is, is reprogrammed to uh to account for that 
So one thing you do need to provide outside of what the BMW M Performance Brake Kit comes with is your own brake fluid. If you're getting these installed at the dealership, you're probably going to end up getting the BMW OE fluid, which is totally fine. It's actually pretty good fluid. It works great for the street and even light track use. Um, I believe it's made by Pentasin. It's about three or four dollars per 500 milliliters. Totally acceptable. I decided to go with modal RBF 660 since I am going to do a couple track days later this year. Um, there's also a modal RBF 600 and of course all the ATE fluids like the Type 200, the Super Blue or whatever the replacement is for that. The one thing to keep in mind when you do go to a higher rated brake fluid, and when I say higher rated, really all it's we're talking about is the boiling points and they have two figures really you pay attention to. And one is the wet boiling point and the dry boiling point. Wet boiling point is a matter of looking at the fluid and what percentage of the fluid is water and then how that changes the boiling point of the fluid. And then dry boiling point, of course, is 100% fluid, 0% water. So that, that figure is always higher uh, in terms of degrees of boiling. But because these fluids have such high wet boiling points, they recommend that you replace the fluid more frequently because they're more sensitive to how much water is in the fluid. So for instance, BMW recommends replacing your brake fluid with a stock fluid once every two years. I would probably consider replacing this fluid probably twice a year. Uh, at least at least give it a good flush uh, once, once a year. And uh, if you're doing track days, you should bleed the brakes out probably before and after each track day. And of course a bleed doesn't take much fluid and a flush doesn't really either. So you're talking about $20, maybe twice a year, maybe once or twice a year, it's not that big a deal. So there is one other brake fluid worth mentioning, and that's the Castrol SRF fluid. It is another high performing brake fluid. In fact, I think it's rated higher than RBF 660 in terms of its wet and dry boiling points. And it's been used in high performance motorsports like F1, ALMS, stuff like that. A lot of Porsche track guys like to use it. And uh, it's actually a great fluid. It just tends to be a little bit more expensive. I think it's probably two or maybe even three times expensive as the RBF 660. But the one thing it does afford you is that it's got a longer uh, time between having to be replaced. I don't think it's a once every two years type fluid. I do think it's probably once a year type fluid. But if you consider that it performs as well as 660 or better and does have a longer lifespan, it might be worth to you. So as I mentioned before, the kit does include brake pads and they are pretty good from what I've read. Uh, supposedly the formulation has been changed in the last few years. So BMW was getting a lot of feedback from the pads not having great initial bite, but also producing a ton of dust. So supposedly the, the pad is more similar to that of the uh, F80 M3, which is a little bit lower dust and, and has better initial bite. Uh, I'm going to run these pads at least on the street and probably for at least one track day and see how they go. I am going to purchase a backup pair of pads, um, not the stock ones. I'll probably go with EBCs or Pagids or something like that. But regardless, I'm going to purchase some sort of backup pad um, in case I do rip through them at the track. I think they should perform just fine, especially considering how the stock pads and brakes perform. Um, I don't really have any concerns there, but once I do get the kit installed, I'll definitely be giving a review and give you feedback on the pads here that, that come with the kit. So one of the things I wanted to do as part of this video on the end performance brakes was weigh some of the components because everyone's talking about how, you know, the weight savings is there and, and they do list the uh, front rotors as a lightweight rotor. I do think it is lighter weight than it would be if it was a one piece steel rotor or iron rotor. However, I do suspect that it weighs more than the factory rotor considering the size. Another component that I'm worried about, uh, at least in terms of you know weight savings, is the, the front and rear brake calipers. Although they are aluminum, they're significantly larger and they have four pistons and two pistons versus one single piston. When I put Willwood uh, Forge Billet calipers on my five series, the caliper weighed a lot less than the stock one did. However, that's a forged uh, kind of slimline caliper versus a, a cast aluminum Rambo caliper with, with lug mount stuff. So uh, we'll see here. I'm going to throw the uh, front calipers on first on this uh, postage scale. It's good to 50 pounds, which should cover us. So we've got um, 8 pounds, 1.3 ounces on the front. I'm going to go ahead and put the rear on. And that's coming up 6 pounds, 2.4. And then we're going to go ahead and put a rotor on and see how that looks. I'm going to have to use the hold function because the rotor is way too big. All right, so here goes the front rotor, and this is the 370 by 30 millimeter rotor. And I'm seeing 26 pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces, and I'll hold that so that we can see it once we pull this off. So although this rotor is listed as a lightweight rotor, it's obviously pretty heavy at 20 some odd pounds. Um, however, 
Uh, if it was a solid iron 370 by 30 millimeter rotor, it would weigh a lot more than what it does. So the reason they were able to save some weight is because they riveted on a aluminum center hat. It's pretty thick. It's not relieved like a conventional uh, aftermarket Brembo. Um, they didn't go that far, but it is pretty nice and they've riveted it on so to save some hardware uh, weight there in terms of having nuts. Um, some of the Brembo's or stop techs or APs will have like uh, hooked fasteners that you, you know, they use on the, on the retention of the rotor. Um, this does not have that. This is also kind of what I would consider a semi-floating, definitely not a floating rotor uh, in that the rivets do not really have anywhere to move. So any warping at or pulling on the rotor surface, there's nowhere for this hat to let that go in terms of uh, flexibility. The rivets might have some give to them, but, but it's definitely not a floating rotor. Um, one nice thing though, I will say, is that when you look down inside the rotor in terms of how they vented it, it's got a more lightweight approach by using little pins that are cast in here versus the typical uh, veins. So if you've ever done a brake change on like an ordinary car with vented rotors, you've seen how there's basically these, these veins that are just cast in the, in the brake. So in this brake uh, rotor, they're actually pins. So you can actually see, let's see if I can focus. Um, you can see through the rotor more often than you would be able to if there was just uh, the typical cast means. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice, sweet, uh, high performance rotor uh, from BMW. And so it's an OE part. Um, it's not cheap, but uh, it should perform pretty well. So I just figured before I wrap up the first part of my M Performance Brake video series, I would just finish weighing some of the components. So here is the rear rotor. This is a 345 by I think 20 millimeters or so, coming in at 19 pounds, eight ounces. Then we've got the brake pad set for said rear rotor, which is one pound, 10.4 ounces. And then the brake pad set for the front, which is two pounds, 11 ounces. So that gives us an idea for each component that we're gonna be replacing. Um, there is one more component that I'll be replacing, and that is the factory brake lines. I decided, um, after looking through uh, BMW ISTA on the proper procedure, um, they really want you to disconnect the calipers with the brake line attached. I've always removed the brake lines um, from the calipers. You can spin the caliper in the wheel well as you're taking it apart. But I figure since these are painted and I have 30,000 mile brake lines on the car now, and I'm already going above and beyond with the, uh, the brake fluid and whatnot, I'll, be, uh, I'll just replace those brake lines with StopTech stainless lines. So those should be here, I believe, in a few days. Uh, and then we'll get to part two of this series, which is the actual install itself. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what needs to be done in terms of coating. All right, guys, thanks for checking out my video and uh, stay tuned for more on the M Performance Brake Setup.